This is the cloud retainer. And this is also the cloud retainer. Hi, this is Elvedo. In this video, we will talk about one of the mighty and eliminated adepti of Liyue, Shanyun. We'll cover her talents, best artifact sets, weapons, constellations, and best team comps. I am very excited for this because she brings a not so new type of gameplay that will surely be fun, which is plunging attack while also being a catalyst support that heals. But before we start, please subscribe to my channel and hit the bell icon so you'll get notified when I publish a new video every Tuesday and weekends. Thank you! Shan Yun's main role is a plunging attack support and healer. What's awesome is, she is an animal catalyst user which means she has tons of weapon and artifact choices and has a very high utility just for the fact that she wields the element animal. We will talk about this throughout the video. To deeply understand her role in the team, let's talk about her talents. Her normal and charge attack are very basic. However, being an animal catalyst user allows her to be an effective driver for elemental reaction based teams or a very suitable wearer of the Viridescent Venner set since she can always swirl with her normal and charge attack. Her plunging attack at this point is just the same as the other catalysts. Her elemental skill on the other hand is not basic. It allows her to jump and have a special plunging attack to end the skill. She can jump up to 3 times from the ground or mid-air, and every time she does, her plunging attack damage and skill AoE increases. This has a long 12 second cooldown. If she did not do a plunge attack, it will decrease by 3 seconds. It is important to note that her skill only generates about 4-5 to five particles, which is not a lot considering the cooldown and her burst energy cost. Just like most Animo characters, her skill is great for exploration. But what makes her skill better is her first passive skill, Gale Feather Pursuit, where each enemy hit by Shanyun's plunging attack from her skill gives her party members a Storm Pinion stack, a maximum of 4 stacks. This will increase her teammates' plunge attack crit rate by 4, 6, 8, and 10% respectively. Xiao will really enjoy this. Shanyun's elemental burst is also an important part of her kit. First, it will deal an AoE animal damage and instantly heals the whole party. After that, she will continuously heal the team every 2.5 seconds for 16 seconds. Her healing is based on her attack. Next, it will allow the active character to have an increased jump height, just like Xiao. They can utilize it up to 8 times, so it means it will end after 8 plunge attacks. This has an 18 second cooldown which is not that bad. However, it costs 70 energy so you will have to make sure she has enough energy which we'll talk about more later. As mentioned, her healing is based on her max attack which complements her 4th ascension passive. That increases the plunge attack of her team during her burst by 200% of her attack, up to 9000 damage increase. The damage increase can only affect one enemy, so it will not work on multiple enemies at the same time, which is just annoying. This increase is similar to Shenha and Yunjin's buff. It is an additive damage, which means it adds to the base damage of the character, so it crits. So you'll see higher damage than the 9000 max increase. She actually proves that she will be a great character for exploration with her last passive, which increases the gliding speed of the party. Knowing how her talents work gives us the idea that Shanyun's main role is to support the team by buffing the plunge attack damage and crit rate while also giving exploration advantages. However, because she is a catalyst user with a decent skill damage multiplier, we can also build her as a reaction driver or a main plunge attack DPS. We'll talk more about it in the next sections. For the talent priority, if you are building her as a support healer or a driver, the priority is to level up her elemental burst for more healing than her skill for an added damage. And you can leave her normal attack unleveled. If you are building her as a damage dealer, prioritize her skill and normal attack to output more damage than her burst. You may level her up to the max level you can, regardless of how you will build her since this will increase your base attack and your overall attack which translates to higher plunge attack, buff, and healing. Personally, I think that Shanyun's kit is very fun and fresh. If I may suggest to add anything to Voiverse, that would be a better crowd control since she is an animal, but I won't complain. Before we talk about the artifact sets, 
let's run through what stats Shan Yun should have on her artifacts. Obviously, we should make sure that she has a very high attack since her healing and damage buff depends on it. However, equally important is her energy recharge. She has a fairly high burst cost of 70, which means the safest ER to go is from 180% to 200% ER or more. This can go lower depending on the teams and her weapons. For her sense, you may either use attack or ER main stat. Use ER sense if you have an attack weapon or if you think you already have enough attack but lacks ER. Use attack sense if you have an energy recharge weapon or if you already reach 180% ER or above. It is better to test which sense you are more comfortable with. For the goblet, attack main stat will be better than animal damage bonus for most cases, especially if you are building her as a support. However, if you have enough attack, you may also use animal damage bonus for personal damage, but again, I highly recommend attack goblet for her healing and buff. For the circlet, an attack main stat will do. However, if you already have a high attack, you may opt to use healing bonus as this provides more healing. On the other hand, if you are building her as a damage dealer, crit rate or damage might be more useful for you. For substats, generally you want to make sure to have ER in attack percent or flat attack. You will see that although she can be a reaction driver, I did not recommend building her with EM since her healing is based on attack. Building her with EM might jeopardize her gameplay and survivability since swirling is not really a part of her kit but rather an innate capability as an animal catalyst. Now let's talk about the artifact sets. As I mentioned earlier, being an animal catalyst user, the cloud retainer has tons of artifact choices. Let's divide it based on how we will utilize her. As a plunge attack buffer or a reaction driver, our Adeptus has several choices. One of the standard artifacts she can use for most attack scaling team is the Noblesse Oblige. This is a general build because most of her party members and her teams, including her, will benefit from the 20% attack buff of the 4P set. So Xiao will especially enjoy this. Diluc and Gaming will too. However, if you have Bennett in the team wearing the same set, which most likely will happen, then you may choose to wear the other artifacts on the list since the effect won't stack. Song of Days Pass is also a great choice because it is built for good healers like her. I actually tested this artifact set on my previous video so make sure to check that out later. Link in the description. First, it provides her 15% healing bonus which will add to the team's survivability. Next, the 4-piece effect description is a little long but let me explain it to you quickly. It basically records the wearer's healing for 6 seconds for up to 15,000 healing including overflow healing. After that, the active character's damage will increase by 8% of their recorded healing. So 8% of 15,000 is 1,200. This might be a little small but just like Shanyun's passive, this is an additive to the base damage. So the damage increase will be more than 1,200 if you reach the limit. This can happen up to 5 times or up to 10 seconds, whichever comes first. When using this set, you should make sure that your Shanyun has enough healing to maximize the effect. Also, you should be mindful that the increased damage can only happen 5 times, so having an AoE damage like Ganyu and Ayatus burst will immediately consume the buff. So this is especially useful for large single enemies. If you do not like the conditions of Song of Days Pass, one of her top artifact set is Viridescent Venner set. This is very broken for elemental and reaction based teams since the 4P set shreds the elemental resistance of the enemies when swirled. It also gives her a little damage with the 2 piece effect giving 15% animal damage bonus. However, Xiao mains will not really enjoy this since this cannot shred animal resistance. If you will solely use her for Xiao teams, it's best to use the first two that I mentioned. Honorable mention is the Ocean Yud Clam set. Just like SODP, it also gives her 15% healing bonus as a 2-piece effect. She can utilize her 4-piece effect since she is a great healer. TLDR, the 4-piece effect will give you this bubble that records her healing including overflow healing up to 30,000. After 3.5 seconds, the bubble will explode dealing 90% of the healing recorded. This damage is considered physical damage. So you can go up to 27,000 physical damage or more with resistance shred. 
Though this is great for her personal damage, please note that the bubble has a small radius when hitting enemies. So if you are using Shanyun in plunge attack teams, the bubble might explode mid-air and hit no one. This is not really a big deal since she is not the main damage dealer for the team or for this types of teams, but it's good to know. If you do not have a 4-piece set, you may mix and match 2-piece healing bonus, 2-piece attack, and 2-piece ER set. I won't dive deep with the DPS build since I really think most players will use her as a support, but for your reference, here are the artifacts you may use. Desert Pavilion will be a great choice because it will give her 15% animal damage bonus and 40% plunge attack damage increase if she performs a charge attack. If you do not have this, you may mix and match 2-piece animal damage bonus and 2-piece attack sets. Let's talk about her weapons. I said it already but I'll say it again. Because she is a catalyst user, we won't have a hard time finding a weapon for her which means she is very F2P friendly. In choosing her weapon as a support, we must consider three things. It should give her tons of attack, or tons of ER, or both at the same time. For a 5-star weapon, of course the best choice is her signature weapon, Crane's Echoing Call. It has a very high base attack and attack main stat. It also buffs team's plunge attack and restores her 2.5 energy when her teammates perform a plunge attack, hitting an opponent. It solves her ER needs while giving her tons of attack all while buffing her team. Memory of Dust is also a great choice, especially if you have a shield during the team. Skyward Atlas is next in line for having high base attack and attack main stat and elemental damage bonus. We actually have a good selection of 4 stars too, starting with maybe one of her best 4 star weapons even competing with 5 stars, the Old Sworn Eye. This is a free weapon from version 2.5. If you have this, you should rejoice and be happy because it complements Shanyun's kit from giving her adequate attack to providing up to 48% ER when she uses her skill at R5. With this weapon, you won't have to stress too much looking for ER substats on your artifacts. Another great 4-star catalyst is the Favonius Codex since she can battery other party members wearing this. Plus, it solves a lot of her ER problems. All other attack main stat catalysts can be used, but I prefer the ones I stated first because it complements her kit. Oh, one more catalyst she can use is the Prototype Ember. I know, this has an HP stat but the effect of this weapon is actually very useful for her and the team, providing both energy and extra healing. This is not the most ideal weapon but it's good to see that she can utilize F2P weapons like this. Just like what I said earlier, I do not recommend EM weapons since it will hinder her buffing and healing capabilities. C0 Shanyun is already good, but some characters including her might enjoy one or two of her constellations. Let's discuss them briefly. C1 just basically gives you an extra charge for the skill, which means more energy and damage at the expense of field time. It is not the best constellation, so I would say if you do not plan on getting the C2 and you are just planning to get the first constellation, maybe you can skip this one and save your primo gems. Her C2 has more value and is a great stopping point. After using her skill, she gains 20% attack for 15 seconds, which means you can focus on other stats like ER. Also, her 4th ascension passive buff is increased from 200% to 400% of her attack, giving a maximum of 18,000 additive damage. This is very useful for her plunging teams, especially for Xiao. C3 and C5 just increase the level of her elemental burst and skill respectively. Her C4 gives her additional healing when she uses her skill. I think her C0 healing is enough though. Finally, her 6th constellation makes her more of an on-field DPS than a team support. Basically, the crit damage of her plunge attack with her skill will be increased by up to 70%. When she uses her burst, her skill will not have a cooldown so she can spam it by up to 8 times. Now for her team comps. Although she is mainly a plunge attack buffer and healer, we will still discuss teams that are not focused on plunging attack. The first template utilizes her kit at C0. It is the plunging attack team, where Shanyun is paired by a plunge attack damage dealer. Before we talk about who will fit in this team, it is important to know that there are several plunge attack damage multiplier you will see in the character's normal attack description. If you are a Xiao main, most likely you already know about this. If not, let me explain this to you. 
The first launch attack damage you see here is the damage you inflict when you hit an enemy mid-air. So you will usually see this on large enemies when you hit them on their heads. Next is the low and high plunge damage. Low plunge is faster to execute but with lower damage. High plunge on the other hand is stronger but longer to execute. The technique here is to perform a high plunge attack then plunging at a certain height before your character jumps too high, just a little above what is considered low plunge. This way, the multiplier will be high plunge damage, but the height is not yet so high that it saves you a little time. This takes a little practice, but you'll surely get this. Xiao is obviously the one who will benefit a lot from her. Aside from his already strong plunging attack being buffed, he also will enjoy Shan Yun's healing since he has an HP draining mechanic. This will eliminate the need for a shielder, which means you can focus on adding more supports and buffers for Xiao. You can complete this team by adding Farina or Mona for damage buff or Faruzan as a dedicated animal support, then Bennett for the attack buff. Note that Shanyun should not wear Viridescent Venner here, instead she can use all other artifacts I mentioned earlier. Another character that you can pair Shanyun up with is Diluc. Diluc Dragon Strike team has been around since the early versions with Venti. However, this is not the most ideal team due to the clunkiness of setting up the current just for him to plunge. Shanyun makes this team easier to play. Not to mention, Diluc has one of the highest plunging attack damage at level 10. What's even better is Diluc has a Pyro Infusion, so he can do plunge attack with Pyro instead of physical. Just like with Xiao teams, you can focus on adding damage buffers and Diluc Dragon Strike team. So again, Farina is very good since she also provides additional Hydro application, although she will not be the main Hydro applicator. That position is for Sing Shou. He is better to use here than Yalan since you can apply Hydro with his pseudo sword shield by just coming near to your enemies, allowing you to focus on doing plunging attacks rather than doing a lot of normal attacks most of the time. Of course, you can add Bennett for additional attack. Here, unlike Shao's team, it is better to wear Viridescent Venner set to shred enemies' resistance. Gaming also will surely enjoy Shan Yun's company. I cannot yet say how good their synergy is since I will still have to test them. There are endless possibilities here. I would recommend to use characters with infusion or elemental conversion since plunging attack with infused element will surely be stronger than those without. For instance, you can try to use Hu Tao plunge attack or Chong Yun plunge with his cryo infusion. Farina has a very good synergy with her, just like Jean. With Shanyun's instant and continuous healing, she can stack a lot of fanfare points in a short amount of time, maximizing Farina's buff. Basically, if you have Shanyun and Farina, I recommend using them together whether your Shanyun is built as a support or a DPS. If you want Shanyun to be the star of the team instead, then definitely build her as your main DPS, where her role is to jump and plunge and deal damage. Here, you should provide all possible buffs you can give. So damage buffers like again Farina, Mona, and Faruzan are welcome. Of course, Bennett can provide her tons of attack. And this team having a shielder or another healer is not really necessary since she can heal a lot. Being the animal catalyst user that she is, she can also be the driver of your reaction. Although this will not utilize her get to the maximum potential, it is still a possibility. The template is basically the same as Sucrose being a driver of the team. The only difference is Shan Yun will not need a healer since she can do it herself. However, there will be no effective crowd control this time. But at least it is fun to jump and plunge, right? They certainly with Sing Show and Yelen as the Hydro Applicator and Yai Miko, Fischl, and Beidou for Electro are great choices. You can also do a variation of National Team here. It's fun to see a new character with new mechanics and Genshin Impact. I am just excited to test more of her abilities as soon as we level her up. So make sure to tune in as I will be releasing more Shanyan content in the future. We reached the end of the video. Again, this is Earl Beidou. See you next time.